In the previous lecture of scapula part 1, we have discussed introduction to scapula, side determination of scapula, and different clinical features that hold scapula. Like uh, you can see here, we have three angle, three borders, and two surfaces, and three acromial process. Now we will continue from where we lift, lifted and uh, in the end we will discuss some clinical features related with the scapula we will correlate this with the uh, clinical features uh, this basic information with the clinical feature so let's start from here because this part is very important uh, especially during uh, physical examination when you examine the patient so you must know some prominent anatomical landmark to to prepare that and to find out where you are and from where you will go like uh, during physical examination when you palpate the uh, when you are going to ascultate the, uh, the the heart so you must be aware of uh, and you must know the sternal angle okay because you put the this two finger on the suprasternal nose then move downward and on the both side we have the two point point per aortic arch and pulmonary artery this way this kind of knowledge in branch is called surface anatomy we guess and discover thing under the skin but because in live patient you, you will not be able to cut everything uh, every part of the uh, live patient and see what is inside it okay anatomy uh, learn you anatomy show you some prominent landmark okay when you learn that so you will be able to uh, examine live patient properly and without mistake so let me start from the uh, anatomical position and surface marking of the um, scapula okay first of all hold the bone uh, in a way that glenoid cavity comes on the on the right the literal side why i i'm saying like that because this is obvious that humerus has come from the lateral side to join with the scapula and form the gleno uh, humeral joint okay so one thing you already discovered that it comes from there then the second thing that the position of the glenoid cavity is not straight laterally okay many many students think that it's located on the lateral side so it may be facing to the lateral side no it's it's uh, facing forward okay some a little upward and then laterally so this is the anatomical position of um, glenoid cavity okay then we have inferior angle and we already discussed that inferior angle lie at the seventh rib inferior angle this is inferior angle it lie at the seventh rib and it corresponding to the spine up and it corresponding to the spine up seven vertebra uh, in it corresponding to the spine of seven vertebra that may remember okay so during physical examination you want to count the uh, 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 inter uh, intercostal space so first you will have to find the inferior angle and once you will find this so you can count the ribs okay this will be six and between the two this will be the uh, intercostal space and we have five four and so on and so forth okay then this is base of the spine but this is covered by trapezius muscle you will not prepare this okay then we have superior angle superior angle corresponding to the second rib okay and the spine of the second vertebra okay and then the border is come parallel 
lie parallel with the vertebral column okay with the vertebral column so here uh, this is the posterior aspect of this bone and uh, uh, this is anatomical position and surface surface marking of the uh, scapula and why it is important i already explained so during physical examination when you uh, examine the patient so you will need this information and uh, it is uh, commonly come in, in the exam the points that is related with the clinical okay so now move to the costal surface it also known is ventral surface or subscapularis surface so this is one of the same thing don't be confused it is concave surface and um, it is smooth besides some ridges which is formed by the uh, rise up uh, tendon of the subscapularis muscle okay so from the center from the center of this we can see two third area originate subscapularis muscle then in its tendon move laterally and on the way it passing over the subscapularis bursa so here this is subscapularis bursa um, which is lies on the way okay. it passing over it here to insert it on the lesser tubercle and what is the purpose of this subscapularis bursa which is lie under the tendon of subscapularis muscle this reduce the friction between the neck of the scapula and the uh, subscapularis tendon okay but sometimes or due to what using or trauma it become inflamed and you, you can see this if, if, if in this part of the scapula there is swelling redness and um, all uh, sign of inflammation so be remember this is the sign of uh, subscapularis inflammation okay then uh, attachment to the anterior surface near the medial border so this is the medial border and now we were going to discuss which muscle attaching to here so this is all this is well known muscle serratus anterior muscle serratus anterior muscle inserted on the subscapularis fossa near the medial border near the medial border right over here okay so inferior six five digitation dig, dig, digitation of the serratus interior muscle uh, attaching or insert on the wheel area near the inferior angle so this is inferior angle it attaching over here and the wrist one two and three attaching on the post on the interior surface near the border this is interior muscle okay don't forget about this okay so here we have subscapularis muscle and near the border we have insertion of the um, serratus interior muscle okay now you can see here this is serratus interior muscle okay so when you push your hand over here okay during dissection you will not be able to touch the medial border because here here is the insertion of serratus interior muscle and here at the big side okay at the big side of your hand here we have the uh, subscapularis muscle okay you can push your hand up to here but beyond this point you will not be able to touch inferior uh, medial border okay now let's discuss about the dorsal surface uh, dorsal surface give attachment to a silk like spinous process 
this is very easy to recognize. We mention a lot about, about, about this to differentiate between interior surface and posterior surface. So on posterior surface, we have a obvious and prominent landmark. Okay, this is spinous process. Okay, the spinous process present only on the posterior surface. And it has communicated between, uh, it divided the surface into supra, supra, small, spinous fossa, spinous fossa, and infra, large. Spinous fossa. Okay, so this spine divided the two surface. Okay, into small and large spinous fossa. And you can see here. Okay, let's move to the other explanation. Okay, we will discuss this spine. Okay, first of all, this is triangular in shape. When you cut on this point, okay or on this point so you will see that this is triangular in shape okay the upper part is crest and the lower okay so here let's explore this and uh, i will discuss in more detail but you must be with me okay so now we are going to discuss the spinous process okay how it is and how many structure it is Okay, how many features it holding here? So this is triangular in shape. Okay, the base of this triangle. Let me uh, write with another color which is more visible. So this is a red color. Okay, so this is formed by the spinoglenoid notch. Why the name so spinoglenoid notch? Because it located lateral to the spine and medial to the glenoid cavity. So this is why they name this spinoglenoid notch. Okay, the base is formed by the spinoglenoid notch. Okay, the posterior border is formed by the crest up spinous process. Okay, crest up spinous process. Okay. Crest of spinous process. It's formed by the crest of spinous process, and the inferior border is formed by the scapula infraspinous fossa itself. It attaching with the uh, infraspinous fossa. Okay, it attaching with the surface of infraspinous fossa. Okay, so this is interior border. Of the triangle, this is posterior border. This is base of the triangle. This is base and the V shape. We already discussed about this V shape. This is base of the uh, of the spinous process, but here it become apex in this setup. Okay. So again, to repeat this, this is very easy. So base is formed by the spinoglenoid notch. Interior border is attaching to the surface, and its surface is the interior border of the triangle okay so here this is triangular in shape and posterior border is formed by the crest of the spinous process okay crest of the spinous process okay hope you understand this and uh, let me show you some more thing over here but this is uh, maybe present in another uh, yeah here so attachment now attachment to the posterior surface Okay, we already discussed attachment to the interior surface. Now it's the turn to uh, discuss attachment to the medial border but posterior surface. Okay, attachment to the medial border but posterior surface. Okay, so here this is superior angle. This is superior angle which is lie at the T2, 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 T2 vertebral level. This is base and here we have inferior angle okay 
Now, from the superior angle to the base, from the superior angle to the base, let me draw with the veil, uh, with the visible. Uh, okay, and this is not visible so much. Okay, so this one is, I think, more visible. Yeah. Okay, so this is the weather. muscle okay it attached from the superior angle to the base of the scapula this is the shape base of the scapula okay in front of base of scapula we have insertion of rhomboid minor muscle rhomboid minor muscle and from base to the inferior angle, we have insertion of rhomboid major muscle. Okay, so now we already discussed the uh, posterior surface and its, uh, its uh, attachment, the muscle. We have three muscles inserting out it. Okay. Uh, we have the butter in scapula muscle which is inserted from the superior angle to the base we have rhomboid minor muscle which is inserted uh, at the front of the um, base okay or at the base level and this base level you know it located at the uh, t3 vertebra we already discussed about that then from the base to the inferior angle this is inferior angle inferior angle we have insertion of rhomboid major muscle okay let's move to the next part and the medial border okay so medial border we already discussed about the medial border okay we have interiorly interiorly we have serratus Serratus interior muscle that are teaching. Posteriorly, we have three muscles that insert on levator scapulae, rhomboid major, uh, rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major muscle. Okay, so let me here on the interior surface, let me uh, show you the uh, one thing we didn't discuss in the previous discussion the anatomical neck and the surgical neck okay so the anatomical neck located when you draw a line from the base of the coracoid process and move downward so the circular this part that located medially to the glenoid cavity this circle part this is the anatomical neck This is the anatomical neck and uh, where is the surgical neck? The surgical neck, when you draw a line from the suprascapular uh, notch and move downward to the uh, infraclinoid tubercle, so the central area, this, this area, this is anatomical neck. Hope you understand. Okay, so let me write down. Th th this is surgical neck, sorry. Surgical neck this is surgical neck okay let's move to the next section and now we already discussed about the spine but uh, a little bit discussion is important let me you know, make some bigger this one to be visualized well okay so this is base we already discussed this is crest of the spine and this crest further continue with the superior surface this is superior surface of a cronium okay superior surface of a cronium okay so the crest part or the superior sur the crest part continue with the superior surface of a cronium okay now we have lower lip let me 
draw with the different color to visualize with this is the lateral lip uh, this is uh, inferior lip of the spine okay when it reach to the uh, junction between the lateral border of the acromion and the inferior lip so it form in angle here okay this is called acromion angle okay and here we have superior lip okay here we have superior lip and the the central area this is crest of the spine which is further continued with the superior surface of the acromion uh, here we have superior surface and underneath underneath superior surface we have inferior surface and underneath inferior surface we have infra acromion bursa and that is very 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 important in anatomical landmark because sometimes you need injection in this uh, in this bursa uh, when you don't know where is the acromion process because acromion process is palpable okay so let's first find out this acromion process and then move somehow lower then because and bone you, you will not be able to inject okay so under the acromion process there is a bursa so your injection will directly enter in the uh, sub acromion bursa okay sometimes it implemented or there is a, it um, there is other need to inject some uh, medicine so you will be able if you know normal anatomical landmark of the uh, acromion process okay so now we have literal border and literal border we discuss many times is but we have some uh, uh, some very uh, special anatomical landmark here we will discuss that it, first thing first okay don't forget about that this border is thicker okay this is a thickest border okay among all border and it has a it has a triangular rub area that is called infraglenoid tubercle and it received the long head of the tricep muscle okay long head of tricep muscle attached to this area okay uh, originated from here okay from infraglenoid tubercle and we have supraglenoid tubercle that received attachment or originate uh, long head of the bicep brachii muscle okay then at the lower half we have two more muscle you can see here tennis minor and teres major muscle okay and we have an artery here that sometimes disturb distorted the uh, origin of the teres minor muscle this is circumflex scapular artery here it looping over here and sometimes it uh, distorted the uh, origin of this muscle okay it is not so important to, to remember but you must know about it also okay so it originated from the uh, literal border and some part of the posterior surface and then inserted into a greater tubercle here there is much here major muscle and there is, uh, there is uh, minor muscle and there is, mus uh, there is major muscle okay move forward and inserting on the medial lip of the bicepital groove now you know we will be discussing when we will discuss humerus okay or uh, if there is a diagram i'll show you okay now superior border superior border has um, uh, one muscle that arises from here near the uh, suprascapular notch uh, inferior belly of homohyoid muscle okay homohyoid muscle structure passing through this notch here suprascapular uh, nerve in a vessel passing through uh, this scapular notch uh, and 
homo hyoid muscle is uh, originated from here okay and then inserted on the uh, lower by lower uh, uh, belly inserted on the common tendon okay in between the superior belly and inferior belly i'll show you okay but this is superior border you can see and this is superior angle so here you can see the the inferior inferior uh, belly of the omohyoid muscle inferior belly of the uh, originate from uh, superior border medial to suprascapular notch and then insert on a common tendon between the superior belly and inferior belly and then superior belly uh, further insert, insert on the, on hyoid the bone. body of hyoid bone now the big part part and this is very important part to be discussed okay so glenoid cavity mm -hmm. this is the literal view of the glenoid cavity to visualize bill so i put here two picture one this is interior view and uh, this is literal uh, this is literal view okay so let's start from the this is shallow here shape fossa this is here shape fossa that articulate with the humeral head to palm shoulder joint okay and uh, here by anatomical position by anatomical position i already discussed that uh, a directed forward slightly upward and laterally okay and uh, here in the superior aspect it receives attachment of tricep brachii muscle and at the lower end it attachment uh, it, it receive attachment of the uh, long head of the tricep muscle okay now in here besides that we have glenoid labrum that surround the cavity and increase its concavity because uh, the ratio between humeral head humeral head is so large as compared to the cavity so to um, uh, to increase the uh, cavity nature provide a fibrocartilaginous ring okay so this surround the glenoid cavity and it uh, increases this way okay so it's surrounding here this is fibrocartilaginous ring and this is just for stabilization of the shoulder joint because this is the more unstable joint okay and more mobile so more the mobility you know less will be the stability remember that okay it it commonly dislocate okay because it more mobile in the whole body in the synovial joint we will be discussing in joint section in more detail okay so now then we have joint capsule that attach proximal to the glenoid cavity okay it encloses the glenoid cavity it encloses the glenoid labrum okay and attaching proximally here and attaching the um, tendon of bicep uh, bicep muscle because uh, the bicep muscle enter in the capsule it, uh, it is intracapsular but extra synovial be remember okay let me show you here if there is diagram uh, you can see here this diagram okay so this enter here and here we have the capsule so this come intracapsular but synovial membrane and synovial QVT and lie under it it is it doesn't enter to the synovial cavity so it is intracapsular and extra synovial okay let's discuss the spinous process we already discussed this uh, we already discussed that apex lie at the third vertebral level it is smooth in triangular in shape this base you can see and uh, the base lie at the spinoglenoid notch okay interior border attached to the scapula okay to the scapula interior border and posterior border which is called crest is here continue with the acromion process and this is acromion angle here now we have acromion angle 
A chromial angle, it lies at the junction. We already discussed about it, but, but to repeat again and again, okay, it lies at the junction of lateral border of a chromium and lower lip of the crest. We already discussed this. Okay, so here, this is lower lip up to here. Okay, now this is the lateral border of the uh, acromion process and the angle is right here. Okay, so acromion angle we already discussed now atavistic epiphysis. Well, what is atavistic epiphysis? So atavistic epiphysis is the bone that uh, at the beginning it is a separate bone and then later on it attached with the scapula. So it, it is believed that the uh, crocoid process, crocoid means uh, crocoid, uh, means like crow, crow head, okay? So it look like crow head. So um, in, in other reptile, it is still separate bone, but in human, it attached to the uh, scapula. So it believe or uh, it's said to be like this, okay? Now we will be discussing attachment to the spinous process and acromial process in more detail, okay. So let's start from the deltoid muscle. And deltoid muscle, you can, you, you know that we have interior fiber, interior fiber, interior fiber that attached to clavicle, okay. So we will not bother with it. Then we have lateral fiber lateral fiber this attach with the deltoid muscle okay lateral fiber okay fiber okay lateral fiber so lateral fiber attach with the with the lateral lateral fiber of deltoid okay let me uh, um, right clearly okay so literal part or fiber 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 originate or attached to attached to lateral border Up uh, acromion process, okay, acromion process, and then we have medial border. Medial border receive the attachment of trapezius muscle. Trapezius muscle, okay, trapezius muscle attaching to the medial border of the uh, acromion process. Now we have crest. Here we have angle, and from angle, this part also deltoid pro, deltoid muscle. Okay, but this is posterior part of the deltoid muscle. Posterior part of the deltoid muscle, which is attached to the lower lip, lower lip of the spine. Okay, lower lip of the spine, and Superior, superior lip receive attachment of the trapezius muscle again. Okay. So this part is subcutaneous and palpable. You can palpate. Okay. Now let's come to the coracoid process and its attachment. Okay. The first muscle that you see here, this is. Uh, pectoralis minor muscle that attached to the tip of the coracoid process and we have another muscle coracobrachialis which run from the humerus and attaching to the coracoid process here okay and beside that we have some ligament okay coraco Uh, sorry, Coraco clavicular ligament. 
which is conoid ligament and trapezoid ligament. Okay, conoid ligament attach medially. Like, okay, conoid ligament. Okay, conoid and trapezoid. This is not sorry for that. Okay, conoid ligament attaching medially and trapezoid ligament laterally. Okay, so this is trapezoid ligament and this is conoid ligament. Okay. Now you can see this picture that the long head of the tricep inserted uh, are passing through between the teres major and teres minor muscle to insert with side, okay, to originate from the side, so it enter in between. Now. To discuss some clinical feature and correlation of scapular so the first thing that is very common and we will discuss some common correlation correlates of the uh, scapula that are mostly re related and very commonly occur okay so the first one is wing scapula as you can see when the medial border is wing scapula Okay, so here compared with this part of the scapula, so this is more protruded. Okay, this is more protruded. Why? This has many reasons, but I will not uh, uh, go into detail of uh, causes, treatment, and everything because this is this become other subject. We are studying anatomy. Okay, and we will mostly focus on anatomical uh, information. Okay. So this is mostly occur due to the long thoracic muscle, uh, long thoracic nerve. Okay, that originate from brachial plexus. Okay, originate from brachial plexus. Plexus brachial root five six and seven five six and seven and run downward. And supply to the serratus interior muscle. Serratus interior muscle. When something occurs with this muscle, that supply serratus interior muscle, so this wing scapula occurs. Because serratus interior muscle, is I mentioned before and discussed in detail, it inserted on the uh, coastal surface at the medial border, near the medial border. When it becomes loosened, so it, it will not hold with the rape cage and it protrudes. Okay, it protrudes. So the most common reason of the protrusion or pink uh, scapula is the weakness of muscle or the damaging of uh, uh, long thoracic muscle, uh, long thoracic nerve. Okay, long. Thoracic nerve, okay. The imaging of long thoracic muscle, root five, six, and seven. So now <clears throat> let's move, move to the other part of clinical correlation. Uh, interior dislocation. It may be posterior, but commonly, commonly it's occur in anteriorly because uh, you know that. Uh, we have uh, so many layer of stabilization of the shoulder joint okay first we have the the shoulder uh, joint capsule uh, then we have a lot of uh, ligaments that stabilize it but it is very mobile joint and more the mobility less the stability of the joint but we have many layer that stabilize the shoulder joint Okay, beside ligament and joint capsule, we have rotator cuff muscle. Oh, we will discuss rotator cuff muscle. It's surrounding the shoulder joint and stabilize it. Okay, and the only weak part of this uh, this this joint is anterior. It commonly dislocated anteriorly because there is no no more thing to to prevent 
it from dislocation and when it uh, dislocated it destroyed the this glenoid labrum okay and this is when commonly dis dislocated so it is very painful so what to do when it dislocated so now i have two uh radiograph okay let's compare how you will recognize the, the dislocated joint or this is not dislocated joint okay first of all look at the look at the humeral head okay it's normally joined to the glenoid cavity okay so this is normal then the distance between uh acromion and humeral head okay and beneath the acromial here is a bursa which is not visible here in this here is a bursa okay we will not discuss about it because we already discuss about this bursa okay so now when it dislocated what happened to this okay look at this it move downward okay first the first point it moved downward and destroy the glenoid labrum okay when it's moved downward so the humeral head destroyed the labrum okay when it's moved downward it's medially rotate okay why it's medially rotate because we have many strong muscle that pull this medially okay uh including pectoralis muscle also attaching to this and it move medially okay and other deltoid muscle and other muscle that uh, um, uh, other muscle uh, 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 rotator cup muscle and other muscle it pull its up again okay first it move downward and then it go up okay so it remaining in front of the glenoid cavity but not in the glenoid cavity okay so it occur like this okay so when unexperienced uh, person look at this so he he will make mistake because it look like it is in glenoid cavity but it is not in glenoid cavity it is in the front of glenoid cavity because the muscle pull it up and here you can see this is glenoid cavity okay and the risk of glenoid cavity it is uh, hide behind the uh, humeral head okay and look at the distance between the uh, uh, acromial process and the here the distance in normal and here the distance in normal so it increases okay so now what to do to fix this problem so first of all it uh, you have to push downward okay let me remove these things okay to understand well you have to push downward okay and the second thing because of some muscle force it comes or rotate medially so we have to rotate laterally okay we have to rotate laterally so when we rotate laterally now we have to push upward okay now we have to push upward to fit in the glenoid cavity and this way we can put in the glenoid cavity like this and after that you fixate that and it uh, will normalize after uh, some time okay so this this is the end of this lecture and uh, keep watching it up to date channel uh, we are working for you guys and uh, your support motivate us so um, i expecting from you more subscriber more watching and uh, if there is something that uh, uh, you don't understand please uh, uh, write in the comment and i will explain again so this is the end okay thank you so much